Financial Solutions with this week's Tech Talk Tuesday tip. That is such a mouthful. So this week we're going to talk about how to run financials in zero. A couple weeks ago or last week maybe it was, we talked about running financials in QuickBooks online and we have a few clients who are in zero and so we decided to do a video as well for them so that they can know how to run the reports in zero because we also get questions it doesn't matter what software um, a business owner uses, that is still one of the most requested questions that we get. So once you're logging in, so I'm here in Zero in the demo company, and once you are logged in, you're going to navigate over to the reports tab, and you're going to select all reports. And so I'm going to show you two ways how to do this. I'm going to show you how to run it yourself, and I'm going to show you how to do it if your accountant is running them and publishing the reports for you and so we're going to do um, the published reports first so if you're working with an accountant or bookkeeper and every month they are running reports and publishing them for you which they should be um, you're, once you're into the reports tab you're going to go over to published and then there you're going to see the reports that they have generated and saved for you and so when you click on the report it will show you um, the full-fledged report and then from here you can print it or you can export it down here at the bottom of the report this report is <laughs> very short in the demo company but you can export it to Excel or PDF or even Google Sheets which is a plus for zero that you can export to Google Sheets or you can print out a hard copy if you will so that's how you get the report if your accountant publishes it for you if you need to generate a report for yourself, then you go back to the reports tab and select all reports. And then from here, you're going to actually click on the report that you want to run. And so you're going to select your report and you're going to select your date range and then you're going to generate it. And so we're going to do, um, because I already have a balance sheet out there, we're going to do an age receivable because that's a pretty popular report as well. But you can see you can do any of the financial reports, tax reports, um, receivables, payables reports. So we're going to run an aged payables report. And when you first click it, it's going to default to the current month, the current period, rather. And so if you want to look at it, you know, for mid-month, and or as of today, the first of the month, and you want to look at it as of the end of the previous month, assuming that everything and all transactions have been entered, step number one, then you're going to go to the date and you're going to select the period for which you want to run that report and select update. And then that will refresh the report to the time frame that you want it for. If you want to compare it to previous um, periods or show it by um, different filter methods, you can change those at the top of your screen. So in this report, we're looking at an age receivable. So we can sort by name or we can sort by um, number. We can also do the aging by the invoice date or the due date. And so typically we like to run them by the due date um, to see what is past due. And so I select due date and hit update and now we see that these are the rece receivables that were due and the periods they were due in. So we know who we need to call and follow up with to find out when we can expect payment. Um, when you're looking at, if we go back over to our balance sheet, when you're looking at a balance sheet or profit and loss, you may want to generate that report. So if you want to record or pull a report for a balance sheet or profit and loss, you may want to run that report by period and look at multiple periods. And so instead of the balance sheet, let's do the income statement. And so we're going to pull this income statement and we're going to pull it for the current month and compare it to the previous period. And so it generates, it defaults when you open it to the current month and then the three per previous periods. But if we click on show date range here at the top, we can select the period, change the date range that we want to look at. So let's just say we want to look at it from... January 1st of 2015 through December 31st of 2015 and we want to compare it with the previous year so one period back and then we hit update 
and then you can also see the report for the full year of the previous year plus the year before. So that is how you run the reports that you need in Xero. If you have any questions, feel free to give us a call and let us know. Thanks.